we have uh, with us our first speaker, Eliseo Pereira. Um, he is a researcher at the Research Center for System and Technologies, SysTech, uh, which is hosted in the Faculty of Engineering in the University of Porto. Um, Eliseo, the floor is yours. I don't know if you want to add um, anything to your presentation, so please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Eliseo Pereira. I'm from the University of Porto uh, in Portugal. And my presentation is about uh, Binosaur, which is uh, a tool that permits the reconfiguration in cyber physical production systems. Uh, starting with the agenda for that presentation, the first part I want to introduce a little bit of Industry 4.0, cyber physical system, reconfiguration in that systems, and, um, and the ESC 61499, which is a, a standard to to reconfigure cyber physical systems. Then I will talk about the implementation of the dinosaur itself and the integration with the other platforms. Uh, the, 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 the third um, point is the test case scenarios that uh, I have to present you. We have three, three different cases and another one related to the performance evaluation of the, of the tool. And the last one is related to the conclusions and the future work of this of this presentation and of this project. Starting with the introduction. Uh, as you probably know, the industry 4.0 bring us several advantages, like the, the digitalization of the industrial equipment, uh, which which enables the connectivity between um, between different kind of devices. And, uh, and makes larger the networks and the cyber physical systems. Regarding that, it is important to have uh, good tools to reconfigure the cyber physical system in order to have, uh, if you have a, a quick modification of, of requirements, for example, if you want to produce a new product, you don't need to go to the equipment itself and reprogram the equipment. You can perfectly reconfigure the equipment from, uh, from a, a remote computer and uh, easily uh, change your, your production targets, change your production line and, and so on. Regarding that, there are different, different tools and programming languages to, to implement uh, this kind of distributed cyber physical systems. Uh, one of them is DSC61499, which is an industrial standard. Uh, another one is the NUDREV that permits the configuration of devices also and the Eclipse CUDA. Uh, focusing on the ESC 61499, uh, that standard uh, is composed by two different uh, components, the develop development environment and the runtime environment. The development environment is basically where the user or the developer uh, orchestrates his pipeline of tasks. Basically, his task, it, it, each task that you have here is a function block, which has event uh, event interface where the events trigger different functionalities in that function block and we have a data interface okay so the user orchestrates a pipeline of function blocks which can perform a certain operation like move a robotic arm and so on then the user maps each of the function block to one device that is running an runtime environment and the EVA automatically sends the, the function block to that uh, runtime environment to execute it, okay? Uh, focusing on the development environment that we have uh, present right now, we have, these are the three most, most common, uh, the FB bench, the Fordiac EVA, and the GARP FBA. Uh, the most popular is the Fordiac EVA, which is an Eclipse-based tool, uh, and have integration with the Ford RTE, which is a, a RTE implemented in C++. Uh, the other two uh, uh, EVAs have um, different features, but they they don't have so popularity in the in the community. Regarding the runtime environments that we have, uh, some of them are implemented in C++, others in Java. Typically, the programming languages that uh, that the runtime environment is implemented is the same that we need to implement the function blocks. 
so that could lead to some restrictions in the functionality that we that we want to implement for example if we if we want to develop uh, a classifier or a regression algorithm is <coughs> is better to is easier to develop that that uh, in python and that could could lead us to some uh, disadvantage of using that uh, that kind of rts rts uh, another disadvantage is the third party integration with uh, with uh, uh, regarding the industry 4.0 and the interoperability between uh, a large amount of devices it's it's a limitation uh, because we use every device to share information between every device that we have in the in the shop and some of that of that uh, of that tools of that runtime environments are achieved projects which is also a, a big limitation because if you have an error, you cannot share that, uh, that error with, with anyone because the projects are achieved. Okay. Regarding the, the implementation of, of the dinosaur itself, uh, basically the, the architecture that we have in the dinosaur, basically we adopt the, for the Archive as an integrated development environment to drag our pipeline and then we have integration with the dinosaur, which is a runtime environment that executes in embedded systems or, for example, other kind of, of computers. Uh, the dinosaur is implemented in, in Python, which permits us to, to implement uh, algorithms for machine learning, communication easily and have third party integration with OPC UI OPC UA uh, applications, which, which is good because in the industry, most of the applications communicate through that, uh, that standard. If you are curious to check the, the, the application, we have here, here the link, and, and you can go, go there and check tutorials and uh, some other examples that we use to implement the, to implement the dinosaur and so on some test case scenarios and so on. The dinosaur implementation itself uh, uses a producer consumer pattern based in threads where each thread is basically a function block that consumes events and produces events. When a function block receives an event, he triggers its functionalities, uh, executes and then produces the output event that uh, that uh, forward to the next function block that performs again and produces the outputs and sends the events to the next one. Okay, that is the execution model that uh, we have implemented in the in the dinosaur. Uh, the the function blocks, which are which are the tasks that we perform in our runtime environment, uh, are implemented using two different uh, files. Uh, a Python file where are implemented the functionalities, the code itself, and an XML file where we define the structure of the function block. Basically, the name of the events, the type of variables that the, the function block has as input and output, and so on. Uh, the next, next point is the integration with the 4 the arc. Uh, the 4 the arc is a different project we integrate with them using TCP IP sockets uh, and the uh, XML uh, messages. Uh, that communication permits from the 4D Act to create, stop and delete the pipelines of function blocks in the, in the RTA that is, that is running that, that function blocks. This way you can, you can drag or, 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 um, or pipeline on the 4D Act and deploy or for pipeline of function blocks in the in the RTS existent in the network, and another feature is to monitor variables and trigger events in the in the function blocks. Monitor variables, for example, imagine that you have executing this function block, you want to see the state of that of that variable. You and in the for the Archive are able to to check that uh, that value of that variable. Uh, regarding the, the OPC UA integration. Uh, as I said before, the OPC UI integration enables the connectivity with, with external industrial platforms or applications. Uh, the data model that we have implemented 
uh, permits to map each each function block into a different category to organize better the the information that uh, that we have we have a device device type service start point and end point the start point and end point are the are the types more related to protocols where the data brings from another for example another function block that is another device for example you have a communication between mqtp or tcp ip to implement a start point or end point to bring data services is an example of a task a predictive algorithm and so on and the device is a, basically a function block that runs permanently uh, 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 reaching data from the um, from the for example from a sensor and so on the data model permits also to store the actual state of the dinosaur so for example if the dinosaur crashes if we if, if we restart the, the dinosaur we we continue in the in the same state the development process from the from the point of view of the developer to to manage the the, the whole system is composed by these four steps uh, both four four steps are performed in the in the for the active AI and in the and in another platform if you want for example an idea to develop the code uh, the first step is to develop the function blocks uh, the python one the python file including the functionalities and the xml file in, with the, the structure of function block then when the function block is created you can orchestrate a pipeline a different pipeline connecting the function block between dependencies between them uh, the next step is to map each one of the function blocks to one different device okay we have a key here uh, two different devices with two different ip addresses and ports uh, and then you can map each function block in the device where where you want then in the for deck there you are able to deploy the the pipeline and send the the respective function blocks to each each device that is running a, a dinosaur instance uh, the test case scenarios that i want to present regarding that that platform uh, the first one is the collision detection in, in server motors we have here a robotic arm based in in server motors as you can see here this is a server motor this is another one another one uh, in this case we collect data from the server motors collect the voltage the current the real and apparent power from the base and the shoulder robotic uh, uh, motors we have here in this function block the data from the shoulder the voltage current real power apparent power and here from the um, from the base from the base motor then the next function block using the data collected via serial port predicts if the robotic arm is colliding with some object uh, or not basically for that we use a classification algorithm in this particular case a random forest and uh, and if it if he if it detects that we have a collision he sends a, a, a event to the robotic arm controller that is performing some task to to stop to uh, to avoid being damaged because you are colliding to a to an obstacle the next uh, the next uh, test case scenario uh, he um, has as components a uh, ur5 robotic arm and uh, a raspberry, uh, 3d printed gripper that is composed by a raspberry pi a servo motor and and 3d printed gripper also uh, in this particular case we have two function blocks one to move the robotic arm from one one particular position x y z with particular rotation of of the joints of the robotic arm and we have also here uh, a function block that is running on the on the raspberry pi of the um, of the of the 3d print, printed gripper that uh, opens and closes the the gripper using the gpios of the of the raspberry pi basically this function block is running in the raspberry pi uh, this one is running in another computer that is controlling the robotic arm so the operation that is made here the gripper close moves up moves down gripper opens moves up 
moves down and cools again, okay? The next scenario that I have is related to manufacturing applications. Uh, in this particular case, is we want to simulate the production process. Uh, each each station of the of the process contains three different uh, function blocks, uh, and the and the products are simulated to pass through each each station and being processed in in each station. This this example uh, permits us to validate the scalability of the of the dinosaur. And regarding that uh, scalability, you, you, we used that, that example to, to do the performance evaluation when we, we increased the, the number of function blocks to validate how, how the performance involves giving, giving that, that, that data. So we conclude that basically the complexity of, of more function blocks causes more resource to be consumed. Uh, the the rate of increasing is basically 18 function blocks by one percent of of cpu usage and and that is is a, a scalable a scalable solution that we have here if you have for example uh increasing uh, a very increasing usage you can also split the the function blocks between two devices to avoid that uh, that that higher usage of of resources uh, as conclusions and, and future work, uh, we have proposed um, a framework that increases the flexibility of the traditional industrial systems. Uh, the usage of Python is a very important feature because brings us some advantages of the developments that the Python community is doing in that uh, in some uh, crucial field that is machine learning, robotics, sensoriza sensorization. Communicate prot protocols of communication and so on. Uh, we have also developed some some uh, function blocks uh, from communication, for example, we use MQTT, TCP, for classification using class classification algorithms and regression algorithms, uh, and to control GPIOs and other kind of embedded devices. Uh, the dinosaur also. Uh, transforms a local heavyweight application into a distributed solution, which uh, enables us to improve the performance of um, of a system because we can split into more devices the the application and uh, increase the the performance uh, this way. As as future work, we want to continue developing new function blocks, obviously. And uh, we want to implement a new execution model in the dinosaur, which is based in speculative computing, which is a very interesting uh, field that basically you predict which is the, the next task or the next function block to execute. And that, that improves a lot your, your performance because you have now the output before executing the, 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 the function block. Uh, another 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 point interesting to see to, to check in the future is to integrate that um, the the platform with an optimization algorithm to obtain the optimal placement of uh, of function blocks in the available devices. Basically, the algorithm can optimize the the distribution of the function blocks. And if if for example, if you have a lot of uh, resources consumed, like CPU or RAM, the algorithm could decide to to split in another in another type of configuration to optimize that that kind of, of consumptions. So that was my presentation. Here are some references, and I'm open to any questions if you have. Sorry for the for the time I was I was too long. Um, well. We, we still have time uh, for a question or two. I don't know if uh, someone from the audience wants to ask you something. Uh, there's nothing on the chat. So I, I do have more of a, like a curiosity. Um, have you thought about uh, bringing this project to publish as uh, open source in the Eclipse Foundation? I know that it's already available on GitHub, but I can see that you have uh, integrated with a lot of uh, our projects. So, for example, with uh, for Dyak IDE. Um, well, anyway, um, just a thought. I think could be really useful. Uh, I think it's really interesting what you've achieved here. 
Yes, yes. Thank you for a question. It is very, very important uh, for us. Uh, we we want to make that platform available. We published that on on YouTube, but uh, to to put that platform also in in Eclipse is also important for us because, for example, for the Akidea is is developed uh, in Eclipse also, and that will will bring us uh, a lot of of advantages uh, regarding regarding that. Uh, that is not more my field. It is the field of of these these two guys here because they are the guys of, of management. But if it is a, a, a good a good a good thing to 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 put that, that platform also in, in Eclipse and to and to continue and continue that. Okay. Um, well, let's just keep in touch after the talk. Um, I do have a, um, a follow-up question for your presentation, but I think I'll save those for the breakout since we're already a couple of minutes late. Okay, um, there is a question on the chat. Is this, uh, is IoT cybersecurity related? Is this for the presentation of Eliseo, Gabriela? Would you like to elaborate? I don't know if I am interpreting his question or comment good, but are you considering cybersecurity? Um, cybersecurity is not. Um, we we are considering cybersecurity more in the in the field of of the function block itself. Uh, we have a, a guy that is developing some sort of algorithms to detect intrusions in our in our devices. So basically, imagine that we have. Check the image here in this image. For example, we have some some network of devices. We have we have we want to develop an algorithm that could detect if we have some intrusion in some of, of the device and 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 so on. Uh, I'm not going to talk to talk about that in more in more detail, but uh, we have developed a, a, a solution to to work with uh, with OPC way, it's working with OPC way and can be extended to um, other other types of, of protocols in the future. Mm 